Suspense. And the producer of CBS Radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. Each year, thousands of short stories roll out from a multitude of typewriters and march across the pages of our magazines and books toward well-deserved oblivion. Few are memorable, fewer still are classics. They pass the time and are forgotten even before the paper in which they are written is reduced to black and ash. But occasionally a story is written that is a true classic, an unforgettable tale. Listen to such a one now. Listen as Vincent Price stars in Ambrose Bierce's weird and wonderful story of the Civil War, Occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge, which begins in just a moment. The following message is from American Telephone and Telegraph. So long. Have a nice trip. Don't forget to phone. Getting away at last. It's a great feeling, isn't it? Looking forward to a carefree weekend or vacation, especially if you've planned ahead by long distance. Now, uh, let's see. You did phone about the cabin. Right. What about the Johnsons? I called them, too. They're expecting us. Oh, good. Well, I guess that takes care of everything. Yes, a little vacation planning ahead of time by long distance does a lot toward making a holiday carefree and fun. Right now is a good time to call while long distance rates are lowest. Remember, whenever, wherever you go this summer, go first by long distance. And now, a current at Owl Creek Bridge, starring Mr. Vincent Price, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. A man stood upon a railroad bridge in northern Alabama, looking down through the ties at the swift water 20 feet below. The man's hands were behind his back, the wrists bound with a cord. A rope closely encircled his neck. It was attached to a stout cross timber above his head. I can free my hands. I, I might throw off this noose and dive into the creek. If I swam underwater, I would be safe from their bullets. If my wind held out, I could make the southern bank, take to the woods, and get away home. Peyton Farquhar, Alabama planter, stood at the end of a plank. A captain of the Union Army and a sergeant stood at the other end. When they step aside, the plank will tip upward, and Peyton Farquhar, Confederate spy, will slip between the ties to hang until dead above the muddy water of Owl Creek. The captain steps aside, draws his sword, flourishes it to a carry, sings out a command. The men on the bank smartly spread their legs, thrust hands forward over their rifle barrels. The sergeant on the end of the plank takes one step to the left. The plank tips forward, and Peyton Farquhar drops between the timbers of Owl Creek Bridge. longer to tell it. As you drop downward, you lose consciousness. You are as one already dead. Then you awaken sharply in pain to feel, not to think, just to feel. The cutting pressure on your throat, the agonies of pulsating fire shooting from your neck downward, to feel the fullness, the congestion, the head bursting with suffocation. Distant no beyond, outside of yourself, you hear a splash. Remotely, you sense cool, wet, green darkness. The rope is broke. You've fallen into the street. Come, Peyton, they can't pick you. The knot's given. Again, now try once more. That does it. You must breathe when you come to the surface. You must breathe quickly. For if they haven't hanged you and they fail to drown you, you can't let them shoot you. And now, deep. You dive deeply, but above the ringing in your ears, you hear the volley of the rifles. And as you rise towards the surface, you meet shining bits of metal, singularly flattened, the distorted and spent bullets oscillating slowly downward past you. One catches in your collar, and it feels uncomfortably warm. 
You snatch it out, and this gray piece of Yankee lead reminds you of the gray uniform on the soldier who is responsible for you being here. It was only night before last when the soldier had ridden up the driveway as you and your wife sat under the magnolia trees in the cool twilight. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Corporal. Won't you dismount? Thanks. I wonder if I might trouble you for a glass of water. Sir. Why, of course. Don't disturb I... yourself, Peyton. I'll go, Fletcher. You're most kind, ma'am. If you indicate the well. Nonsense. You just sit a spell with my husband. You look as if you could do with some rest. Yes, ma'am. Reckon I could. I'll be back in a jiffy. Thank you, ma'am. Well, Corporal, whose command are you with, huh? Colonel Tolliver, sir. 13th, North Carolina. Hmm. Yeah, we get so little news down here. <laughs> How are things going at the front? Not good, sir. The damn Yankees are getting ready for another advance. They're repairing the railroad. Got it in shape almost to Owl Creek Bridge. And they got outposts there. Once they can run trains beyond the bridge, there's nothing to stop them between here and Atlanta. Well, then, then why hasn't the bridge been destroyed? The military couldn't get near it. A civilian might. Owl Creek Bridge, huh? Well, that's not far from here, is it? Less than 20 miles. That bridge is important. Sure is. Mm. What if it were destroyed? Hold up the Yankees for several weeks. Suppose a man, a more civilian like myself, should elude the picket post. What could he accomplish? Well, I was there a week ago, just before we had to pull out. There's a heap of driftwood come down in last winter's flood caught on the trestle at this end. Looks mighty dry and tender to me. I see. A fellow with enough gumption might get through and set fire to it. It ought to burn like tow. Yes, yes, it should. Here's your water, Corporal. Right out of the spring house. Thank you kindly, ma'am. My, it's cool and nice. Well, reckon I better hit the leather. I got a lot of riding ahead of me tonight. Well, good luck to you, Corporal, and thank you for the information. You'd be taking a chance, sir, but you couldn't do a greater service for your country. I remember that, Corporal. Bye, ma'am. Bye, sir. Many thanks. Yes, <laughs> break the surface of Owl Creek for a second time. And now you are much further downstream, further away from the Union soldiers on the bridge reloading their guns, the ramrod flashing in the morning sun. And then, something seems to grab you and you whirl round and round, spinning like a waterlogged top. You're caught in a vortex, a whirlpool. The water, the banks, the distant bridge, the soldiers become indistinct blurs. You're helpless. You feel dizzy and sick to your stomach. Just as you felt last night when you crept up the bank toward the lone sentinel at the south end of the bridge and discovered that the sentinel was not alone. There he is, boy. Grab him. All right, take him. I got him, Sergeant. Oh, Mr. Peyton Farquhar, we've been expecting you. How did you know my name? We got ways. But look here. I I'm a civilian. I, I was just... Save your breath. Thank your maker we didn't shoot you in the back. We don't do things like that up north. You'll get a trial, everything fair and square. All right, bring him along, men. Here he is, Captain. Right on schedule. Good work, Sergeant. Is this the man, Lieutenant? That's him. Why, you... You're the corporal who stopped at my plantation last night. That's right, Mr. Farquhar. But not of the 13th North Carolina Volunteers. Mr. Farquhar, this is Lieutenant Saltonstall, Intelligence Officer, 5th Massachusetts Regulars. You've trapped me. You deliberately led me into a trap. I I'm a civilian, a planter. And also a southern patriot, caught in the act of sabotage. You can't prove it. We don't have to. But why have you done this? Why have you deliberately trapped me? Well, it's so much easier to eliminate civilian resistance by luring it into the open. You fell for the bait. Too bad. Now, look here. It is my constitutional Which right. Which constitution? Constitution of the United States of America or Jeff Davis? You insulting Remember Yankee. your manners. 
sir. I demand a trial. You've just had it. Post the guard over him, Sergeant. Yes, sir. We'll hang him in the morning. Your Columbia phonograph dealer is proud to present the new sound of pleasure. Stereo One by Columbia, number one in the wonderful world of sound. Only Columbia's leadership and advanced engineering could bring you so many exclusive features, so many handsome models. There's a Columbia Stereo One phonograph for every room, for every budget, every listening need. If space is a problem, Columbia has a new stowaway speaker model. If you want twin stereo units, Columbia has them. If you want true stereo sound in one unit, Columbia has it in several handsome models. Thrilled to the excitement of true high fidelity combined with the realism of stereophonic sound. No matter what you want in stereo, Columbia has it. And your Columbia Phonograph dealer is headquarters for Columbia Phonograph. Portables start as low as $24.95. Elegant consoles start at the amazing low price of $129.95. See them all, hear them all today at your Columbia Phonograph dealer. And now... Starring Mr. Vincent Price, Act Two of A Current at Owl Creek Bridge. But they didn't hang. The rope broke and the whirlpool carried you away. And now you realize that the whirlpool is stuck. You open your eyes. You are lying on the southern bank of the stream, out of the sight of your enemies. Safe. You leap to your feet and run into the woods, south, towards home. nearly noon now, and for a half hour you've been plunging through a swamp waist deep in green ooze. Your neck hurts constantly, your head throbs and your tongue is thick. Gnats swarm before your eyes and catch in your eyelids. Mosquitoes buzz in your ears, drill deep into your hands and your swollen neck. You can't go on any longer. You slow down and you stop. You reach toward a palmetto root for support in it. It slithers from your grasp and slides softly into the water. Watermark. Fear finds you at last. Terror, which stood aloof when you fled the executioner's bullets, now embraces you with clammy unction. Water moccasin. Now each branch and root seems to writhe under your glance. The swamp is undulating with certain death. You plunge on through the dark, sinking ooze, on and on, tripping, stumbling, but never stopping. The terror rides your back, flogging you with a whiplash of fear. Fit as a fiddle in jig time. Now, you just drink this here, your pee, Mass Farquhar. Oh, thank you, thank you. Jethro. Yes, sir, Mass Farquhar. What are you doing here? I live here. You live? Where am I? What happened? Well, I was pulling my dug out and coming home through the swamp with a mess of catfish, and I sees you lying out there on the bank in front of my cabin. Jethro, I heard I, I thought you were dead. Who, me? Dead? Of course, you thought Jethro was dead. You knew he had consumption when you sold him. You knew he couldn't last long and he wasn't earning his keep. His wife and his daughter had carried on some at first, but after a while they calmed down, and last you heard, Jethro was dead. <laughs> you thought I was dead, my Farquhar. Why, sir, don't you know what done happened to me? I'm free. I'm free at last. Yes, sir, I'm free. And I expect pretty soon my woman and my little girl are going to come along and join me. Uh, how is they, my Farquhar? Is they well? Oh, yes, 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 indeed. They're, they're both fine, Jethro. Jethro, I don't, I don't know how to say this, but I really was sorry about having to tell you. But there wasn't anything else oh, I Oh, I understand, my Farquhar. Don't you pay it no mind. I didn't forgive you long ago. Don't the Lord tell us to forgive those who trespasses against us? And don't the Lord promise us we shall be free? Don't you worry none about it, my Farquhar. Hey, here now. Quiet that, Pop. Quiet, Tigger. I must have heard a razor back in the bread. No, it ain't no hog at all. Look, my Farquhar. There's a horse coming down the back road. Why, swear's a soldier. There's one of our soldiers, too. Copper, look like. Jethro. Jethro, you've got to hide me. 
Oh, why does I got to hide you, my father? Don't ask so many questions, you insolent. My father, why you forget? I'm free now. Oh, yes. Yes, well, then as an old friend, Jeff, so please just hide me and don't tell that soldier anything. <laughs> why, so? I reckon I can do that for old friend, my father. Here, uh, you get on under this bed here and I'll put the covers over the side for you. There. Have you come this far just to be turned in by a wool-gathering black who talks crazy? If Jethro knew this gray-clad corporal was really a Union lieutenant, he'd guarantee his freedom by turning you in. Unless, of course, unless, of course, he's planning to dispose of you himself. Yes, that's it. He's going to do you in himself. Y'all can come on out now, my Farquhar. Thank you. Lord, I declare I don't understand none of this. You says not to tell him you're here, and he says not to tell you he's been here. Now, what's this all about, my Farquhar? Nothing, Jethro, nothing. I owe the man some money, and I'm not ready to pay it yet. Oh, oh, I see. (laughs) I wouldn't know nothing about that. Money is something ain't never bothered me like it bothers some. Money and me's always been strangers. Jethro, what are you going to do with that knife? Huh? Oh, I was just fixing to slit up some of them catfish I got in my dugout. Look like you could do with a little food, my Farquhar. No, 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 thank you, Jethro. I, I want to get home by sundown. If you'll just tell me which way I should go. Well, I don't rightly know, my Farquhar. But I reckon from the way the sun's reclining, it'd be down the road that way. Uh, quite a fur piece down. Yes, that should be about right. i never been back, you know. Never tried to go back since I've been free. Yes, I know. Reckon it won't be long till my woman and my little one comes here to me. Of course. Yes. If you get back, my Farquhar, if you see them, you tell them I'm here waiting for them. Yes, I'll, I'll do that, Jeff, so I'll do that. Car owners, here's news about a revolutionary new product by the makers of famous K-Sight. It's new K-Sight 3C, a heavy-duty crankcase concentrate for use in all engines. Added to your motor oil, K-Sight 3C with Barrowman quickly stops hydraulic valve lifter noises, cushions and soothes the engine. It cleans your engine and keeps it clean. K-Sight 3C gives protection against acid, rust, and corrosion, too. Add to the oil every 2,000 miles, and you'll have a tough oil that won't thin out. Oil that cushions the load on every working part. Cuts down friction, wear, and noise. With K-Sight 3C in the crankcase, gas and oil mileage increases, and your engine has more pep and power. Remember, you get results with K-Sight 3C or double your money back. Get it at your service station, garage, or car dealer now. Only $1.50. And now, starring Mr. Vincent Price, Act Three of A Current at Owl Creek Bridge. You get away from there fast. The shells of the back road crunching under your muddy boots. That grinning savage standing in the doorway of the shack, the knife in his hand. At each moment until the road bends and cuts off the cabin from view, you fear he'll come after you. The knife poised to plunge you in the back to pay you for the thrust you gave him when you sent him away to die. But he's still standing there, grinning foolishly and waving as you turn the bend. How long have you been running down this endless road? It's dark now. Is it night? Or has the blood trapped in your head by that suffocating rope at last burst into your congested eyeballs and blinded you? No, no. The darkness is only the black of a sudden summer storm. That lightning flash clearly shows the white road ahead and the black silhouettes of trees along the side. Another flash of lightning directly overhead. For an instant, you seem to see the soldiers of Owl Creek Bridge standing at the side of the road, rifles leveled, their eyes boring down the sights, aiming at your heart. Again, you're running. 
And the rain has turned to hail. Pellets as big as harmony beat down on you, pound your swollen, bruised neck, hammer on your countless cuts. And again the light. And on the other side of the road, the gray-clad corporal sits astride his horse, waiting for you. No! No, you can't get me now! No! This moment of lightning strikes a tree ahead of you. And in the white, blinding light stands Jethro, black and grinning, knife raised in the air. No! No, Jethro! Jethro, forgive me! Forgive me! Gone. And now you see dangling from each tree along the road a noose swinging in the wind. Wherever you turn, wherever you look, a noose waiting for you. A noose which wriggles like a water moccasin. No! No! Standed on the green lawn of your plantation before the high-columned entrance. The storm is over. The clouds are black and menacing all around the horizon, but through a break in the sky overhead, glorious sunlight streams down, bathing your garden and your house in heavenly light. You are home. Now you hear a rustle of crinoline, and down from the wide portico steps your beloved wife. She runs across the lawn, arms out. Hayden, my dear, you're back, just as you promised you'd be. For this moment, you have endured the agonies of this day. And were those agonies multiplied a thousand times, they would be small price for the benefit of this breast, the sanctuary of these arms, the security of these lips. You step forward to fold your wife in your embrace. <laughs> Stretched tight, sang like a bowstring. Peyton Farquhar was dead. His body, with a broken neck, swung gently from side to side beneath the timbers of Owl Creek Bridge. in William N. Robeson's production of Occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge, adapted for radio by Mr. Robeson from a story by Ambrose Beers. In a moment, the names of our supporting players and a word about next week's story of suspense. If you're the happy driver of a Chevy or a Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, or a fabulous Cadillac, here is something you ought to know. Keep your car on the go. It's Guardian Maintenance. Guardian Maintenance. The best kind of service for the best kind of cars. GM trained mechanics, the most modern equipment, too. Using factory approved parts. Keep your car as good as new. See your General Motors dealer and get Guardian Maintenance. The best kind of service for the best kind of cars. Right now, your dealer is offering performance service specials. The things that should be done before a vacation motor trip. This is the time for engine tune-up, tire rotation, front-end adjustment, and a complete lubrication. The Guardian Maintenance way. See your General Motors dealer and get Guardian Maintenance. The best kind of service for the best kind of cars. Supporting Mr. Vincent Price in tonight's story were Kathy Lewis, Barney Phillips, Sam Pierce, Roy Glenn, Norm Alden, and Sam Edwards. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with Miss Marcia Hunt starring in Night Man. Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. The latest news follows, then Have Gun Will Travel on CBS Radio.